This is the continuous flow apparatus for measuring the specific heat capacity of liquids. And in this case, we're measuring the heat capacity of water. It consists of a partially evacuated glass tube, and this acts as an insulation jacket. And inside, there is a narrower glass tube, which contains a heating element, which is wrapped around the entire length of that. Uh, that is powered by this power supply, and we have over here uh, an ammeter and our voltmeter for measuring the power supplied to the heater. So this method is designed to help uh, eradicate inefficiencies and energy losses such as heat loss to the environment by allowing us to heat the water at two different rates and bring it up to the same temperature. So I've got a thermometer here as the water goes in to the apparatus and on the other side there's a thermometer here as the water leaves and we can see to within about a tenth of a degree the water is leaving at the same temperature as it enters. When I turn the power supply on the heater will start heating the water and I will collect the water that leaves the tube from this pipe and I'll find out the mass of water collected over a period of time. The water is delivered to the apparatus by this constant head tank which is held high above the apparatus to start to create a high rate of flow and then for the second run brought lower down so the flow rate is much less. This is my first run. I've got the constant head tank held up high so water is going to be passing through my continuous flow apparatus at a faster rate. I've set the power supply at just under 15 volts, 14 volts there, uh, with a high current of 6.3 amps flowing through it. So that will be producing a temperature rise across this tube. So water is entering the tube at 18.0 degrees and it's leaving over here at 21.8 degrees. And I'm going to try and keep that temperature difference the same between both tests so that the rate of heat loss into the environment which is proportional to the temperature will be constant. So I can eliminate that from my equations. I've got water coming out of the pipe over there, which I'm going to collect in a beaker. And I found the mass of this beaker and it's 143.9 grams. And I'm going to collect water for one minute so I can find out the mass of water that's being collected. I will then lower the constant head tank run the experiment again, adjust the voltage and the current so I get the same temperature rise and that will allow me then to find the heat capacities. So I will start my stopwatch and I will put the hose into the beaker at the same time. So I'll collect water for same length of time, I'm just going to hold that to stop it falling out. So the temperature over here is 22.8 degrees, so I've got a 4.8 degrees rise. Five, four, three, two, one and there we go that's my minute so in one minute i've collected around about 225 milliliters of water so i will put that onto the balance and that is total mass of 389.4 grams so i know the mass of the beaker so i subtract that and i can find the mass of water collected now i'm going to turn the power off I'll adjust the constant head tank and we'll run the experiment again. Okay, so this is my second run, and I have brought down the height of the constant head tank to just above the height of the 
continuous flow apparatus. This means that water will be flowing much more slowly through the apparatus than it was before. Um, holding the output tube quite high as well to reduce the rate of flow so that as little water as possible can flow through the device whilst it's being heated. You can see I'm getting using a much lower voltage. Just this, there we go. So we're using a voltage of about just under 11 amps. Thereabouts, so it seems to be a such a connection, and a current of 4.7 amps. So, produce, providing much less power than we were in, in the first place, but still getting pretty much the same temperature rise. So, the water is going in at 18 degrees and it's coming out at 22.7 in this case, 22.8 at some points as well. So, we're getting a slight variation, but we're still within a tenth of a degree getting the same temperature rise. It's gone up to 22.8 now. So I'm going to again catch water or collect water for one minute and at the end of that minute I will weigh the water to see how much we've collected. So that's using the same beaker as last time so I know the mass of this beaker which is 143.9 grams and I've dried it so that we're not wet, finding the mass of the water as well. We do have a little bit of leakage from the device on the input side where water is coming in but as I haven't heated that water yet I'm not wasting any energy on it, it shouldn't affect our results. In fact, it should be no different to the water that's been lost from the overflow pipe in this tank here. There's no leakage from the other side, so this should be a fairly accurate way of finding the heat capacity of water. Okay, and at five, four, three, two, one, and there we go, it's my minute. And that's the water. So let's get the balance out. And let's find out how much we have collected. Well, that is 294.3 grams. So that is nearly 100 grams or 90 grams or so less than the last run. Okay, so from that we can now use our values for current and voltage which we can see there on the screen and we'll start to be able to process this data to see if we can get a value for the specific heat capacity of water.